Hello again, Renegades fans. Welcome to Hudson Valley Renegades Live. I'm Rick Zolzer. Glad you've joined us. There's so much to talk about tonight. We've got a lot to talk about in terms of what's going to take place at the ballpark in the 2021 season, how things are going to be done to keep everybody safe, to keep everybody involved. And we're going to talk about tickets. We're going to talk about social distancing. We're going to talk about masks. We're going to try to touch on everything and also give you guys an opportunity to ask questions. Do so in the Facebook uh, comments section. And then one of our many Zachs that work for us will then take that question and they'll get it to me so I can ask it of our two special guests. But before we get to them, we've got a little piece of uh, tape put together for you. And for the first time in my career, I get to say, just like Warner Wolf used to say, let's go to the videotape. Hey, Renegades fans, Tyson Jeffers, Vice President, Assistant General Manager. We hope you're doing well. We look forward to having you back at the Dutch on May 11th for opening night. It's gonna be a unique year. There's unique policies and procedures that we put into place to make it a safe environment for you, your friends, and your family when you come to a ball game. Lately, we've been getting a lot of questions from season ticket holders asking about capacity limits, tickets, seat locations. We want to answer those questions and provide some transparency on how we're implementing the rules and regulations dictated by Major League Baseball in the state of New York. So there are two major things that have a significant impact on seat locations. That is the distance between players and fans and the distance between fans and other fans. So let's start with the distance between players and fans. So Major League Baseball is dictating the rule that there must be a 12 to 13 foot buffer zone around areas that players are required to be. The main area that's gonna affect seating is the dugout. So we'll, we'll walk through an example of that together. So the entrance and the exits of the dugouts, as well as the lip of the dugout, there must be 12 to 13 foot buffer all the way around. Um, because of this, we'll lose a number of seats here on the first row uh, next to the main entrance and exits leading to, to home plate. And then we will lose a number of seats, actually a lot of seats, um, on this first row right behind the dugout as well as a little over half of this row. This buffer zone eliminates 30 to 40 seats both on the first base side and on the third base side, specifically around the dugouts. That's before even getting into the other rule, which is the distance between fans and other fans. That is the six foot socially distanced pod seating rule, which is dictated by the state of New York. Let me show an example. So we will take four seats here on the aisle in section 104 as our example seats. So the blue seats are seats that someone can actually sit in. Now the red seats are the seats that no one can sit in. I'm just going to draw a simple circle around the blue seats to represent the seats that will get blocked out. So as you can see, there's a number of seats both directly in front, directly behind, and beside this pod to make sure that we're fully socially distanced um, in our pod seating. Now we have to do this in a pattern format throughout each section and then again throughout the entire ballpark. Now that you know the rules, let's look at an example and show you how we built each section. So starting in section 104, we know that these seats will be blocked out due to the Major League Baseball buffer zone rule. Um, so we'll start on row one and we'll go ahead and place some seats. So let's, let's just say we're gonna place four seats in this first row and that's gonna start our pattern. Now, enacting the second rule, which is the six foot socially distancing rule, we know that we can't have seats directly next to or behind these seats. So we need to mark out these seats right next to it and the seats behind it. We need to make sure that we're keeping six feet around each pod. So now as we look at this, we have a decision to make. We have to look at the third row and say, okay, if we put seats here, what will that do to our pattern in row three? Versus if we put them on the aisle, what will that do to the pattern on row three? So let's just go ahead and plug in a couple seats here and then we'll block out the rest of the row. So what that does is it creates a pattern to where we'd have seats on the aisle, seats in the middle, seats on the aisle, and that will be our pattern. So now we can look at this, look at this row and know that we can plug in two seats here and still be within six feet. We can honestly, we could do three if we wanted to. And then on this next row, 
we can do another thing of four. If we wanted to do five, we could. Um, knowing that your decision on where you place seats in one row immediately affects the next row. And that continues to progress as you get back in the section. But just looking at this, you'll see that we block off around 60% of the seats per section, um, which means that let's say this section has 100 seats total. 60 of those are filled up with season ticket holders. We know that we can only place people in 40 of those seats. That means that 20 people are being displaced or moved to another section. So if we started here, our next priority is gonna be section 105. And then once we work through 105, we'll see who's having to get displaced or moved, and we'll move on to 106. Our goal is obviously to keep people as close to their seats as possible. The next goal is to keep people within their level of seating. So we want to make sure we're working through the Empire box seats first and we're accommodating as many season ticket holders as efficiently as we possibly can, making sure that they have seats. It might require some people to get moved from one section to another, but our overall goal is to keep people within their level of seating. So if you have an Empire box seat, we want to make sure that you have an Empire box seat. If you have a lower box seat, our goal is to keep you within the lower box sections. The other thing that we had to consider is when we looked at a section, we broke the section down based on the number of seats that each account had. So if you're an account that had two full season seats, we made note of that. If you had four full season seats, we made note of that. We tried to see what pattern would be the most efficient to accommodate the most number of season ticket holders within that section. Um, that allowed us to one, create a target and create a pattern um, that would take care of as many people as possible before we put them in the group that would be relocated to another section. So we looked at that uh, from section to section and again made sure that at the end we were keeping people within their seating level. A common question we've been getting lately is, will I be able to move back to my original seats in 2021? The honest answer is, we don't know. But what we do know is we have a plan in place, ready to go, should guidance be updated. Ideally, that's in 2021, but we can't make any promises at this time. We hope this video helped answer some of your questions. As always, we appreciate your patience and your understanding, especially during these unique times. If there are any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We look forward to seeing you at the Dutch soon, and go Gates! All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching that video presentation. We'd like to thank our man Tyson Jeffers, who is new to the ball club. He didn't get a chance to be, to be debuting last year for the season we didn't have. Tyson is the AGM and the vice president of anything that requires attention to detail. This guy gets it done. As you can see, he's our own John Madden with the Telestrator using his little colored pens on the board. He absolutely crushed it. So let's introduce you to our, our gentlemen that are gonna be here. They're gonna answer the questions that I'm gonna ask that I've prepared, figuring what you guys would wanna know. And also I remind you that you can ask questions in the comment box on Facebook. That way uh, they can forward them to me on my iPad and I can ask the guys questions. So first, uh, let's, let's go with the guy who had the salmon colored shirt on. His name is Tyson Jeffers. And he's the guy that got everything done. So Tyson, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. Tyson Jeffers, Vice President and Assistant General Manager. No salmon tonight. I'm going with the, the Navy. Uh, but I look forward to seeing everybody at the ballpark on May 11th. It's going to be fun. And next is a guy who's been around. Well, he was around opening night way back in 1994. Was with us um, for a couple of years and then became the GM. And then he left us. He broke a lot of hearts, went to Florida, like most old people, but he came back unlike most old people. It's Steve Gleiner, our president and GM. Steve, say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here and looking forward to having everyone back at the ballpark this season. All right. So in case you live under a rock and you haven't been paying attention, we are the proud, uh, we are now a Yankee affiliate, you know, Yankee logo, Yankee logo, Yankee stadium behind me. I got Mickey Mantle over there. I got the stadium way back up there. So um, we are delighted to be a Yankee affiliate. So that in itself is exciting news. But this year we have a lot to deal with in terms of COVID-19 and the ripples that are in the water that prevented us from having a season last year. But this year we're going to have a season 
And there's all kinds of ways that we're going to have to do things for your safety so you can attend games because we're sure uh, we're pretty sure that everybody wants to get out of the house at this point. And Tyson did a great job of outlining how the pod system will work. So, gentlemen, let's start with tickets um, and, 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 and a couple of things that would be under tickets. First and foremost, when folks come to the game, and we'll start with you, Steve. When folks come to the game, there's going to be uh, COVID precautions in place with social distancing and masking. Why don't you give us a rundown of how that stuff is going to work for everybody? Sure, Zoles. Thanks. And uh, with regard to social distancing, uh, we are going to be following the six foot rule, both in our seating pods and um, of course in the concourse. So we'll have social distancing dots along the ground um, when you're in your line of concessions at the ticket window. And then as far as masking goes, uh, and, and this is a, a mandate coming down from Major League Baseball and of course in New York State with the CDC as well. Um, everyone's going to be asked to wear a mask over their uh, nose and mouth at all times in the stadium unless they're sitting in their seat eating and drinking. Just like Zoles is doing right now. I don't know if everybody Not like it. this. <laughs> Thanks for the demonstration. So, uh, yes, and that'll be anytime you're out of your seat, moving around the ballpark, we ask that you keep your face mask over your nose and mouth at all times. But again, while you're at your seat and you're eating and drinking, you can take that down and, and do your thing. All right, Tyson, you did a great job of, of explaining how the seats are going to be set up. So if, if, if how are we going to separate a group of four from Kerhonkson and a group of three from uh, Kingston. How is that going to work? Well, that was odd. So Tyson, can you answer that question in between all the phones going off? Yes, yeah, so just so off. I understand your question. Uh, <laughs> the You're just talking about the, the general pod seating. Are, are you talking about as, as a single game buyer as purchasing tickets? No, I'm going to get to that question. It, it, it's okay. a matter of... Uh, a group of four people, how are you separating them from another group of four people front, back, oh, what's going to be the transition pieces got it. that okay. are going to be in between I, there? Yeah, I understand now. Okay. So yeah. So between the pods, obviously we need to block off the seats to make sure that no one is sneaking in and, and getting into an area that is within the, the six foot distancing rule. We've got a couple options. So we've been promoting our fan cutouts that we're continuing to sell. You can go to hvrenegades.com and, and click on those right on the homepage um, and honor, you know, honor someone, a friend, a family member, whoever, a dog, uh, yourself. But we'll use those to help socially distance our pods. And maybe if I can roll over here, I'm in my office right now, but I have a seat and you can see that I have it nice zip tied. Uh, so we will zip tie those whether they have a fan cut out in them or not, there will be a zip tie so that someone cannot just come and plop down and, and take a seat that is within, uh, within the uh, six foot distancing, um, I guess, parameters that we have to abide by. So if, if Bob Hand runs to the concession stand and gets a beer and he decides that it's too far to go back to his real seat, he just can't grab another seat. He has to go back to his regular seat. Yeah, Bob, Bob will be sitting on the top of the seat <laughs> if he tries to do it because it will be zip tied shut that is the oddest thing gliner you're calling me how is that no, you're calling me <laughs> no i swear to god my phone is, is lighting up and saying steve gliner <laughs> iphones are going crazy all right so the pod system is is is, is done two ways one it could be a cutout and i, I think it's going to look really cool to have fans honoring people in their family um perhaps they want a picture of mickey mantle perhaps they want a picture of babe ruth like you said, their dog, the cutout situation is a very cool way to do it. Um, however, even with cutouts, the things will be zip tied down. So you physically can't put the seat down and sit in it because that's how it's got to work. So let's talk about, you know, there's been a lot that's been in, in the news lately. And, and I, I'll go to Tyson again. No offense, Stevie. Um, so they're talking about the fact that we might have three foot social distancing as opposed to six foot social distancing that's really not going to matter to us much, is it, based on the map and how you explained it? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the three feet won't make a huge difference, and there's two main reasons be because of that. Um, so as I showed in that video, uh, there can't be anyone directly in front or directly behind. Unfortunately, those would still be blocked off with three feet because you'd be within three feet if you were directly in front or directly behind. Uh, the other piece of that is if the row was long enough and we were able to have seats, say, on each each aisle of that row, we still wouldn't be able to place 
people in the middle of that row because we can't have anyone stepping over anyone else. So we always need an access point on each side of the aisle for the different pods or different groups to access their seat without having to go over or around somebody else. Okay. Now, Steve, this question's for you. Um, we are at the mercy of two very big entities, Major League Baseball and the governor of New York. So whatever they say is what we have to abide by. These are not rules that the renegades are making. It's certainly not rules that the Yankees are making, because sometimes people don't understand that this is stuff that's sent down by Major League Baseball. So if Major League Baseball says we can have 50 percent capacity and the governor says we can only have 20 percent capacity, we have to go with what the governor says, correct? Right, so it's, it's basically whoever's guidelines are more strict. Those are the ones that we'll have to follow. And um, th those will be in place. And, and, you know, as of today, it's 20 percent. Um, it, it could change as we get closer to the season. We're hoping it will. And we certainly expect that as the season progresses that those numbers will relax a little bit more. But essentially, that, that's how we're uh, – those are the things that we need to follow in order to be able to open up and welcome fans back into the building. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so, Steve, I'm going to stay with you on this question because it's it, – we have our first question from a fan. It's Amy Brown. And, it, and, and I, I'm guessing that several people have asked this question. Um, what will the rules be based on vaccinations and proofs of vaccinations and, and that kind of thing? How is that all going to shake out? Well, thanks for the question, Amy. And, and again, as, as we sit here today on April 14th, the uh, rules that are in place that are, are for a facility of 2,500 or, or more fans that, that can be in a building. In our case, our capacities touch over 5,000. Um, we would have to uh, have people show proof of vaccination or proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours. And again, on the proof of vaccination, that's a complete vaccination series plus 14 days. Um, so those are the guidelines we'd have to follow as of today. And again, those may change as we get closer to the season. Um, but that's how I can answer that question as we sit here today. And those specific guidelines with regards to a vaccine, vaccine card and stuff like that. That has nothing to do with Major League Baseball, the Yankees or us. That's what the governor has suggested. That is based on the guidelines set forth by the state of New York, correct? Okay. So again, when, when you get to the front gate, you can't yell at the poor guys at the gate or the gals at the gate. It's something that the governor says has to happen because listen, you know, I, I work here and I know what we've gone through and how hard Tyson and Steve and and everybody worked from, from last season to try to get ready for the possibility that we could play games. We don't want to do this stuff. I mean, I, I, I think I speak for everybody on this one, that we don't want to be the bad guys, but unfortunately we're on the front line and we have to enforce the rules such as social distancing. We have to enforce the rules based on masking up. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to have to be a pain in the butt more so than normally by telling people you got to have your masks on because the only way you can have your mask off is if you're sitting in your little pod and you're having some popcorn or sarsaparilla. Otherwise, it's mask up. And if you're walking around the building, you definitely have to have your mask up, right? Correct. So we're going to be the ones that have to enforce the rules that the governor is setting forth. So folks, you know, don't crush us because we're so delighted that you're coming back and that we're getting to have baseball. And oh, by the way, we're getting baseball with the Yankees. Hello. That should be pretty cool. So another, another um, pretty cool question. Um, Nancy Muller has asked, and uh, you know what, Tyson, I'll do this for you because you've been the ticket maven. Um, is the 20% that we're allowed to have, will that cover all of the season ticket holders or will others be able to purchase some tickets? Yeah, so right now the, the main areas that season ticket holders are um, fairly populated are going to be in the empire box and the lower box. So right now we're not selling any additional seats in those areas as we continue to lock in everyone's seats and their plans. Um, there are a number of season ticket holders in the upper box sections, but we do have seats. There's enough seats within those sections that we have made seats available for single game purchasers, as well as the Valley reserved sections. So the three hundreds and some of the GAs, um, those will be available for single game buyers and we have group holds. So if, if anyone is looking to bring a group out, we have uh, tickets available for those as well. And those all fall within that 20%, obviously, as um, the percentages are increasing. So if we're able to get to 40%, 50%, um, we'll eventually hit our max if there's still rules in place on the, you know, the six foot social distancing. 
um, we'll, we'll reach our kind of limit as we talked about with the three foot rule, which doesn't really affect it. Um, but the areas that we have the most flexibility are going to be our group areas because we can, we have movable tables, we have picnic tables, those type of things. So we can, um, have more ability to fill those spaces a little bit more and, um, be a little bit more flexible with any changing rules. Like if there's a, a three foot distancing rule, we could obviously squeeze more tables into a group space to have more, people and accommodate more people out there. So uh, there's opportunity for us to increase and we've set it up in a way for us to be flexible and be able to quickly increase and make more tickets available. But right now we're sitting at 20% and we're just hoping that by May 11th, that is uh, a little bit higher than where we're at right now. All right, Steve, this one's for you. Uh, and I, I think it's, it, it, it's, the, it's the two places in our building where the lines are always the most. Let's start with the restrooms. How, how are we going to attack that? Because that's a question online. Well, it's a great question. And, um, you know, basically it's going to be the same thing along the lines of having a, a certain number of people in the restrooms. We're also going to, um, uh, you know, block off certain areas in the restroom, maybe every other sink, every other uh, urinal in the men's room. So uh, it'll just be based on capacity at that time. And, you know, people will have to go in one at a time and leave one at a time as, as capacity allows. Okay, so that brings us to the area where there's lots of lines. Mm -hmm. Concession stands, A, are they gonna be open? Um, in your mind, based on our 20%, how is that all gonna work? Yeah, we're gonna have plenty of points of sale to accommodate the percentages that we're gonna have in the building at any given time. Um, so fans shouldn't expect uh, any longer waits. Uh, in, in fact, the, the waits may be even less in some cases, just because, again, we're going to make sure that we have enough concession points of sale open to accommodate everybody in the building. Um, and of course, the answer to the question is, yes, we will have food and beverage available. Okay, so why don't you break the news about our food and beverage for this year? So we're excited about this. We partnered with Pro Sports Catering to uh, run our food and beverage operation here at the Dutch for this year and many years beyond. Um, We've had them in our St. Paul club that's in our group and uh, they've done a fantastic job there and we're excited to bring them on. We're excited to uh, uh, see the, uh, the type of quality of foods and the type of quality service that they're going to provide. We've experienced in our St. Paul club for uh, the last five years. All right. So we have a person who used to live here in the Hudson Valley and I'll ask Tyson this one, Shirley, and she currently lives in Virginia and she wants to come up for a week and she wants to see some Renegades games, how does she buy individual tickets? And I've, multiple people have asked that question, but I just recognize the name because she was here for a long time. Yeah, so there's, there's two main options. Uh, you can go online to hvrenegades.com and you can do it online. It's a very easy process, a couple buttons. Um, you go in, pick the game, pick your seats. Uh, to explain that, if you're doing it on your own, it's a little bit more unique than in previous years, like we've talked about with the pod seating. Um, let's say that you're bringing, it's just you and another individual, so you'd only need two tickets. Make sure you're looking for a pod of two seats. So if you're two, but you click on a pod that has four seats, it's going to auto-populate all four. And that's because we can't have unfamiliar parties sitting next to each other. I don't think anyone would want to buy two seats and then um, someone else buy two seats and then show up and be like, wait, who are you? So um, we have to set it up that way. So if you're, if you need four tickets, look for a pod of four. If you need two tickets, look for a pot of two, um, or you can give us a call and um, our number is 845-838-0094. And uh, we'll sell you tickets on, over the phone and we'll help you pick the seats out and we'll, we'll make sure we take care of you. And then we can always uh, shoot you an email with the PDFs with the tickets so you can print them from home or access them on your mobile device. All right, Steve, I'll ask you this question, even though Tyson is obviously the, the seat guru. Um, I'm going to assume that the number of seats available to the public over and above uh, season ticket holders and that 20% is if you want the flexibility of having pods to pick from, the sooner you do it, the better. Because again, we've been without baseball for a year and now we're finally going to have baseball. So the seats are going to be uh, limited. So you better move. That's right, Zoltz. If you go online right now, you'll see there are several games already where ticket availability is limited. And that's because we've had our individual game tickets on sale for a few weeks now. So people are definitely going on and buying individual game tickets. And so 
Absolutely. I would highly recommend that if there are certain games if, that, that you're looking at in terms of days of the week or opening day, it's pretty limited. I was just looking at it today. Um, you definitely want to go on there sooner than later. All right. So I'll answer this question to Shirley, because again, she was a season ticket holder way back in the day. If you're picking a week that you're coming up and you want to watch a Renegades game, you probably want to go online as soon as, as possible and, and guaranteeing the fact that you can get a pod that will fit your needs, whether it's two or four. Now, Tyson, back to you on this one, since you made the freaking map and it probably took you about nine and a half months to do it. Um, what are the different sizes of pods? Are there fives? Are there sixes? Are there eights? How, how do the pod sizes work? Yeah, so the the pods are built to accommodate the, I guess, account holder. So um, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes. Um, I believe the max that we can have is a six. The thing when we were creating the manifest and uh, looking at the patterns is there's, at least from a season ticket standpoint, there are many season ticket holders that have stacked tickets and that's just unfortunately not possible based on the rules. So everyone is in a straight line this year, um, at least temper in these. And we should talk about them as temporary seats. Again, like I mentioned in the video, um, we hope that we get, you know, word that guidance is being relaxed or lifted and we can, you know, move everyone back to their original seats as soon as possible. So hopefully we don't have to go through a full season of everyone in temporary different locations. But um, yeah, for right now, that's how we set it up. So there's, there's pods of, you know, even ones, there's some ones that we took care of. So ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes. All right. Very cool. I'm glad uh, this is one of the, the tougher questions because people are asking over and over again about the COVID restrictions. And I'll read it um, word for word from John Whitman. Would you once again clarify those of us who have been fully vaccinated and those who have not and need a negative test before entry? So if you could go over that again, because apparently lots of people want to hear exactly how this is going to work from A to Z and, and include everything, even though we're saying it again. Sure thing, John. Um, so the way it works, and again, this is as the rules are in place as of today. Um, we don't know if that will change as of May 11th on our opening night, but as of today, and, and this, if you just as an example, if you went down to Yankee Stadium or City Field for a game, those are the same rules that are in place. Uh, so what you would need to do is to provide proof of vaccination. And when they say plus 14, basically what that means is they want you to have 14 days where the vac your, your final vaccination um, has taken place. So if you have the two, the two shot vaccination, the Moderna, for instance, um, that you would need to be plus 14 days after the date that you had the second vaccination. So you would so have Steve, that on your card. If they, if they had it on March 31st, they could get in the building tonight, their Correct. second shot. Exactly. Okay. So uh, then you'd be fully vaccinated and, and fully covered. Um, with regard to, to a COVID test, there's a rapid test. So if you went earlier in the day and got one and came here and showed us proof of that, you'd be fine. But also, if you had proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours, you could show that as well. And that would uh, also allow you entry into the building. And someone just asked, let me get her name. Um, Diane McCauley asked, do children 12 and, up, uh, 12 and under need COVID testing? As of today, that would be the, uh, the, the correct assessment. Um, anyone who would be coming into the building would need to, to show a negative COVID test. And obviously uh, children of that age I don't believe are eligible to be vaccinated yet. So um, it would be a negative COVID test for that. Tyson, question comes from Robert Day. And Robert wants to know, will there be Leo's tables available to the public this year to purchase? Hey, Robert, thanks for the question. I recognize the name from uh, placing your seats. <laughs> so yes, yes, there will be. There will be Leo's tables. They're available right now. So if you uh, wanted to look at the schedule, figure out a date, just give us a call and let us know. We can take care of you right now. And I can well, maybe, add, maybe tomorrow. Maybe I should say tomorrow. Call us tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll add on the Leo's tables, you know, those are their own pods technically. So you have a table for two and a table for six. Those are basically a pod. So, you, you know, that, and that's typical how those have always been sold anyhow. Uh, and and I can, I'm telling you that not only are people blowing up the questions about the vaccines and, and the, the negativity, People are hitting me on my regular Facebook message because they heard I'm taking fa Facebook messages from Zach. So I'm getting hit up on that as well. And, and it's pretty much overwhelming the fact that people want to know about the vaccines. But I, I got one and I want to get to it because it comes from a lawyer. So hold on. So bear with me while I scroll to it because it, it's really, if they're coming um, fast and furious. Um, well, this is similar to the thing. 
Uh, does the Excelsior pass count as proof or do we still have to have the CDC vaccination card that is coming from Sarah Burns? Thanks, Sarah. And, and yes, in New York State, the, if not everyone is familiar, the Excelsior app um, allows you to utilize that as a means to, uh, to, to show your uh, COVID, uh, I believe the testing as well as the proof of vaccination. So you would be able to show that at our games as well uh, as proof of either. Here's, here's a really good one. Um, Cheryl Small asks, can we have a picture of our card or do we have to have the actual card? That's a great question. Not I one of were... two. So I, I've finally been stumped. <laughs> that, that Dude, that's a three-two <laughs> slider in the dirt. You got it. Uh, I believe, uh, and, and if, if we need to update this information, we will, but I believe you should have your card with you for, for the proof or the Excelsior Pass. Okay, um, let's go Tyson. We've already talked briefly about single game tickets. What about group tickets? How, how does that process work? Yeah, so in our group areas that we have to look at it similar to like we looked at uh, the rest of the ballpark or, or the seating bowl is um, we readjusted how we were setting up each group area. I mean, obviously in a normal year, we're trying to cram as many people as we can in there, at least from an experience standpoint, as many people as we can, that will have a good experience. Um, this year we had to, uh, you know, we went out and measured all the areas, you know, we took into account the buffer zones next to the bullpens for, you know, the right field and left field areas. Um, and then we measured out how many tables we could get in there and we set our minimums and maximums based on those numbers. So everything is six foot distancing. Uh, we will still do, picnics and those type of things and in, in all of our areas from a, a suite standpoint um we're still selling the suites there'll be 15 to 20 people you know we can accommodate that uh safely and we have the ability to block off certain seats and still have plenty of seats both on the exterior and the interior of the suite um, as well as food packages that go along with that so we've we've taken all the precautions that we need to take and, and followed all the rules that we need to follow but we still have the ability to successfully have groups out in, in all of our areas and, and for everyone to have a good time. Well, I want you both to hear this because you heard me say a little bit earlier that, you know, that we don't want to be doing all this stuff. We want to open up the building and let people come to the ball game and have a good time because one thing we haven't touched on, and I can touch on this because it's from my universe that, you know, people who come to the games, they know that, that, that I go on the field. We do pregame on the field. I go on the dugout and do games. We do games on the field. Well, none of that stuff can happen this year. Um, you know, Tyson, told us in the beginning that there's a buffer zone between the players in those sensitive areas. So we can't go on the field. We certainly can't go on the dugouts. So we're going to have a, a, a specific zone because people are asking about national anthem and first pitches. And we're going to create Steve. It was, was it called the kid zone? It's, it's really stupid that I don't know the name of it, where we used to play have the, the inflatables. What play was zone. it? Play zone. The play zone. Okay. Duh. I've only been here for 25 years. Why wouldn't I know that? Um, and, and hubby is going to be, painting the area and putting in a little field on the concrete. We're going to do first pitches down there. We'll do national anthems down there. We'll do some of our games down there. And we try to figure out how we're going to do those in socially distant. But somebody just said, thank you very much for doing all this and help keep everyone safe at the ballpark. It's much appreciated. So one of our fans tipped their cap to us and said, we appreciate it because, you know, I pretty much explained, we get yelled at for the dumbest stuff constantly. And this one time, it's not about a hot dog that, that isn't cooked right. It's not about a beer that was warm. This is about the rules that we have to enforce that we're not setting, nor the Yankees. And sometimes it's the blanket response. Well, the Yankees got money. Let them fix the problem. No, it's we have this because of Major League Baseball. They made sure we didn't get contracted. That's why we're here. And we happen to have the Yankees, which is pretty cool. But the Yankees have nothing to do with this. We'll be enforcing the rules that Major League Baseball puts forward and then the rules that the governor of the state of New York puts forward. So we're going to do our best to make it safe for everybody, but everybody's got to, they got to help us guys. And, and, and when we say, can you please put your mask up? Can you please do the right thing? You know, if, if you're going to be silly, we do have sheriff deputies who are on site who would then have a conversation with you and you don't want it to get to that point. So please, we're not doing this because we like it. We're doing this to keep everybody safe. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's a real fair assessment. Um, and, and again, we appreciate everybody's kind words. We've heard from, a lot of our fans, uh, just to, just like that, you know, saying, "Hey, we understand that 
there's a lot of things that are different right now. And, and you know, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, the challenges of opening this year are greater than uh, many can imagine. Um, and so we're, we're really grateful for the uh, understanding from everybody and, and the patience uh, as we go through all this and we navigate through all this. And, and um, any venue in the state, um, I, I get to speak with uh, a lot of the other GMs and the affiliated clubs across the state. And, and we're all dealing with, with similar challenges. Um, but we're excited about welcoming fans back to the ballpark. And, and we understand it's going to be a little different, but we're trying to keep it as, as normal as possible. You know, Zolz was mentioning the promo zone. That came out of a meeting where we were talking about, um, you know, we want to keep the experience as, as familiar as it is for everybody who comes to Renegades games. And, you know, we have this great video board that we put in a few years ago. Um, how could we utilize that to make sure that we're still doing first pitches in the ballpark and, and socially distanced safe games that we can't do on the field anymore. So we're, we decided to create this promo zone, which was the play zone, the kids area. And, to uh, utilize that space where there's a lot of space out there and then utilize our video board. So we'll video stream right to the video board, the contest. So people in the ballpark can actually take, uh, take part in some of those typical on-field contests. We'll just be doing it in that area instead. And uh, that'll, that'll be really cool to be able to see fans still be able to do that safely in the ballpark uh, and show it up on the video board. So that, that was just one of the, the type of ideas that we took a situation that didn't sound so good because let's face it, there's nothing more cool than going on the field. I've been doing this for 33 years. And I still get it. really excited about going on a professional baseball field. Um, we can't do that this year. You know, we're trying to keep the players uh, as safe as possible and keep them separated uh, from, from everyone else uh, in these times. So that's the way we're able to, to keep the things that are familiar here at the Dutch and, and keep the fans involved in those. All right, so I got one one silly one, one cool one, and then a couple of serious questions. So the the the, the so far the quote of our broadcast comes from uh, Jeanette DeGraw Chiswick, and she says, "Woohoo! I don't care what we have to do. I'm just excited to be back at the Dutch." So Jeanette, thank you very much for that 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 response. That's pretty cool. Uh, Tyson, um, how will season ticket holders acquire their tickets and their parking passes for this year? That is a great question. And that's why whoever I asked, asked it. it. Thank you for asking it. Um, <laughs> so, so tomorrow we will be sending out communication to all of our season ticket holders via email. So please keep your eye on your email. There'll be information on how to log into your online account and access your tickets digitally. If you would like to have your tickets printed and pick those up or have them shipped, there'll be an option for you to fill out a form so we know to do that and we can prepare all of that for you and get it to you ASAP. Um, along with the along with the uh, the season passes, so the half season and full season uh, passes, we'll have the hanging tags and we'll also have the ability to load those into your account on a game to game basis so that you have um, a, essentially a ticket per game that is strictly for parking and that allows you to, if you ever email your tickets to someone, if you're a company and share them with clients, your employees, you have the ability to email those to, to people along with the tickets that you're giving them. So it should make it a lot easier on everybody. All right, Tyson, I'm going to come back to you in a second about uh, a season ticket thing. Um, but, and, and Steve, I'm asking you this question, even though I think I know the answer to this question, it's one of those questions that the big boy has to answer. Um, Carolyn De De Dedio says, will there be rapid testing at the ballpark? Unfortunately, at this time, there are no plans for rapid testing here. Um, so, you know, we would ask that you take care of that prior to coming to the game. Okay. Uh, Tyson. So Poughkeepsie Nissan, let's make sure we have a game tomorrow night. And Poughkeepsie Nissan knows that they can't use their tickets tomorrow night. What's the process of them making sure it doesn't get wasted? Because every ballpark in the country has a no-show rate that they deal with all the time. In a year, when we can only put 1,200 people in the ballpark to begin with. That no-show rate is critical to what we're going to do. We want to make sure there's butts in every single seat. So what does Poughkeepsie Nissan do to make sure, to help us out, that there's somebody in their seats if they can't come? Yeah, so the, one of the best benefits, I think, especially since we're going from a, a short-season team to a long-season team, any, anyone that's that bumped up to the new full season, the 60 games, I mean, this is – a huge selling point for anybody is that you have the ability to put your tickets that you're not going to use back on sale. We call it the season ticket exchange program 
or step. It used to be called G hub. Um, it's the same, same process as it's always been. If say Poughkeepsie Nissan's not able to come, they have the ability to put their tickets back on sale. Once they click submit of putting those seats back on sale, they will show up to anyone looking online. They'll show up to our staff who are answering phone calls and selling tickets over the phone or in person. Um, and in a time that we have very limited seats and uh, already, if you look at some of the games, people are <clears throat> scrapping to get the last few tickets. So once season tickets are able to do that, there'll be some more available um, for people to go buy. But uh, it, it allows people to go out and, and sell their tickets. And once they do sell successfully as a season ticket holder, you receive a credit that you can either redeem during the season towards food and beverage, even if you needed to get some extra tickets or bank that until the end of the year. And when you renew for 2022, you can apply that credit to your season ticket balance. So it's a really great program. Uh, we're going to stress it a lot. We're going to educate people probably to a degree that you're going to be sick of it by the end of the year, because it's really, really important that uh, everyone's utilizing that and not letting their tickets go to waste. It's a benefit for our season ticket holders. At the same time, it's a benefit for us because we have the ability to put some butts in the seats, like Zoll said, and for them to come and enjoy a game that they might not have been able to come to. So, I mean, I, I know that, that we're supposed to be asked doing questions, but, but Glide, we now have Zach Neubauer who came to us from the St. Paul Saints. And this guy is, is ridiculously creative. Um, he does video, he does flyers, he does logos. I mean, he's, he's the freaking man. And that's why, this thing looks so cool and we have countdown clocks and video insertions and, and stuff we've never been able to have before. Um, I think we should have him do something that we could play on the board during the game and, and an in-between inning break where it's fun and it's unique and it's cool to explain the step process to the people that are in the ball, ballpark. So it's entertaining. So it's not beating them up. Absolutely. Uh, so Zach, there you go. Uh, I know you're watching. Another <laughs> project for it. <laughs> How big is that? I, I refuse. I refuse. Oh, His honeydew list is already long. Um, all right, here's a couple of more. Um, Sonny Vanderwater, Edelman, will there be single game availability for luxury boxes, and are they still going to do food buffet for them? And I'll answer this question. Yes, there will, and please call Rick Zolzer. I'll book those for you <laughs> so I get the commission. How's that going to work? So I think that's a great idea. So, Sonny, whenever you're ready, you, you get a hold of Zolz, and I'll take care of you. No, I'm sorry. Tyson, go ahead. Explain. I had to do something wise ass. I'm sorry. Go. Uh, no, you answered great. Uh, if you want to call Zoles, you can. If you want a real salesperson to take care of you, you can call anyone else. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be real entertaining in the sale. You guys are going to be too boring. I'll make them laugh. No, right, but so we, we, do have, we do have suites available for every single night. There are food and beverage packages that go along with that, alcohol packages that you can add on. So it's, I mean, it's a great experience, especially as we get into the summer. They're climate controlled spaces. So you have AC inside or you can go sit outside and watch the game. So it's, it's a great experience. If you haven't done it before, you should definitely give us a call and ask some questions about it. Thanks, man. All right, Steve, we got about 16 minutes left. Um, what do you see will be our biggest challenge to the folks and making sure that we can put on our show and keep everybody safe at the same time? One more time, Zolz. I'm sorry. What do you see as our biggest challenge as a staff to guarantee that A, we'll put on a good show and B, keep everybody safe while we're doing it? Well, that's our number one goal. Um, and so, you know, as a staff, we, we've been planning here for months to, to make sure that we deliver on that. Um, so, uh, you know, fans can expect when they come out here, uh, you know, to be to see a familiar product and, and to feel at home at the Dutch as they always have. Um, and again, uh, you know, as the season progresses, we're hoping that uh, things may relax a little bit where we can get back to some more familiar things. But for now, rest assured that, that the experience that you're going to have here when you come to a game is going to be top notch. All right. Nick Carbs asks, Steve, I'll stay with you on this one. He said, will there be bobbleheads this year and giveaways? If so, how are they going to be given away with social distancing stuff required? So we're, we're actually finalizing our promo schedule as we speak, and everything has been kind of late and delayed this year. So that's why we don't have a promo schedule out there yet. And Zoles, you know, you've been working really hard on that. Um, we are going to have some giveaways. We're not going to have as many as we normally do. Um, so there you go, six. And um, 
we will uh, make sure that from a standpoint of being able to give away items that we're going to do it safely. Uh, we're still working on the plan for that. Um, but again, as part of just doing things here that, that fans are familiar with, we wanted to make sure that we had the giveaways, that we have fireworks, that we have theme nights, and that we can execute all those in a safe and effective manner. So again, when you come out to the games this year, expect to, to see things that you're familiar with. Tyson. I know you've been on some of the calls with the New York Yankees and there's, there are multiple people asking questions about what people are going to be here. And one particular person, um, I can answer this part of it that we don't know who's coming and we never did. Like we would know literally a couple of days before, before everybody showed up in the old days, I can't imagine it's going to be much different than that. The Yankees have assigned some guys to us and I doubt Dominguez is coming. So what do we know now based on who we may or may not get? Uh, to be honest, nothing. Uh, we'll find out probably the beginning of May, around that time, who our, who our guys are going to be this year, who are, what our roster is going to look like. Um, they hold all of those things pretty close to their chest because there's injuries, there's movement up and down. They have to uh, make sure that they're placing the guys in the right, right levels uh, right out from the gate. So – Everyone finds out really late, you know, if, if we're being honest, we, I mean, I would love for Dominguez to come next year when we can have 5,000 plus people in the ballpark every single night. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's their Bo Jackson without a doubt. And he's the guy that everybody's asking about. You got to remember though, the kid was 17 a month ago. He's now 18 years old. You're not going to take a guy like him who's considered your number one prospect and stick him at high A. He may end up here for a cup of coffee at the end of the season you know, as a, as, a, as a thank you, if he plays well at below us, but that's the kind of kid that they're going to, they're going to baby. Cause he's, he's really young, even though he looks like a 28 year old man, he's a complete freak of genetic nature. Uh, he, he's just, he's absurd. So we open and people should know this. We, our home opener is on the 11th, but we open on the road the week before that. So that's why we're going to know that first week in May, who preliminarily, who we're going to have in the ballpark. That will change as well as we move forward. Um, and, and, and folks just got to be patient with us. We never know in any other year, right, Glide? We don't know who we're getting until maybe a couple of days before they all get up, put on a plane and set here. That's right, Zoles. Usually we get our roster about three days before the season starts. Um, one thing I could tell you, and, and, and this has been talked about through minor league baseball for the last few months, that with all the COVID protocols in place, they're going to really try to limit player moves this year. They're going to try to keep players with their teams, with their with their groupings as much as possible. Okay. Clearly, in, in, in baseball, there's injury situations, and you do have to build your roster up for that. But I think that you're not going to see as many player moves as we might traditionally see in a regular season. All right, let's go with Tyson on this one. Wayne Fitzpatrick just asked this question. What league are the Renegades going to be in? How many teams are in that league? And how many home games are the Renegades going to play? Okay. Uh, we'll start with the number of games. So we, we play 60 home games, 60 away games. That is the 2021 um, schedule. It's possible that next year it might be a little bit more. Uh, this year, and Steve, help me out with the number of teams. <laughs> help me out with the number of teams. This is all new to us. So we're a high A East. So we're, we're a high A East division. Uh, we're the north, I guess, the north division of high A East. There is a south division. There's a little bit of crossover this year, but not as much as there will be in a normal year. So we will play probably more Southern teams. We'll travel down South a little bit more in the post COVID era, and there'll be more Southern teams coming up to us. Um, but right now in our division, we have Aberdeen, Brooklyn, Jersey Shore, Wilmington. And is that it? Steve, is that it? And us. And us. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I could, I could fill in a little bit more on this. And, and it's a very interesting schedule uh, for those of you who have had a chance to see our schedule. So we have um, six game homestands and road trips this year. Um, we do not play on any Monday across the entire season. So every Monday is an off day. Uh, the homestand and road trips start on Tuesday and they end on a Sunday. And so, um, like Tyson said, we're going to be playing pretty much within our division. They're trying to keep travel min as minimal as possible this year. So we're not going to see the Southern tier teams very much, but towards the end of the season, uh, we're going to be heading down to Winston-Salem and Greensboro for a 13-day a, a road trip. Um, 
And then I think uh, Winston-Salem comes to us at one point. I'm looking over my shoulder here to see the schedule um, as uh, the one team that's coming into us from the south. Or is it Greensboro? Greensboro, I'm sorry. So uh, Greensboro will be coming here. So uh, in a typical season, though, moving forward, we'll probably be playing more across the entire league. And so you'll see a, a greater uh, variety of teams coming through here. But in 2021, this is how the schedule is set up. If if you're a Mets fan, we play Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Cyclones, a lot at home. So check out those games. All right, uh, Steve, a tough one. So I'm going back to you on this one um, because there are actually a couple of tough questions. I'm only going to we're only going to do a couple of more because we have nine minutes to wrap this thing up, and I want to give each one of you the opportunity to do a closing statement. So, um, Steve, first and foremost, people are a lot of people are asking about renegades gear and being able to buy hats what can you shed on on those two things well great question it's a question we've gotten a lot um over the last few months so uh merchandise will be available when when the season begins here at the, at the uh team store or online uh, we do have some stuff online but we don't have anything new online yet and again with the uh late start to everything in the process of what we've had to do this year from becoming a yankees affiliate um, to changing up our look a little bit and then having to run that through the typical process of trademark and, and uh, getting approvals from Major League Baseball properties. Uh, we weren't able to roll out merchandise very early this year. Um, but once we get into our season, we're going to have a pretty good variety in the shop. And um, once we get later into the season, we'll be rolling out more new merchandise as the season progresses. So you can get it at hbrenegades.com on our online store or here at the ballpark. All right, Steve, next time I come to you, it'll be your closing statement, okay? Sure. Tyson, this is a hard one. I'm not sure if you know the answer to this. Um, I'm not, I don't know the answer to this, but um, Glide, our, our old fr friend Bev Stove McCants uh, has asked, what are we doing with the housing of the players? And there, and there are multiple people in the string who are asking that question. Uh, I can answer that. Um, first <laughs> off. <laughs> well, Tyson. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, no, I'm taking it away, Steve. <laughs> Um, first off, our host family program, and I've worked in a few other markets around the country, uh, almost speechless about it. I mean, it is the, the greatest, one of the greatest things about the Renegades in our 27 year history. Um, and, and I can't thank all of you enough. And I know there's probably a lot of you watching that have either hosted families in the, uh, players in the past or have done it, uh, more recently. Um, probably one of the greatest things about players who come here and play in Hudson Valley is the relationships that they forge with their host families. Um, as you can imagine this year um, in 2021 with, with the COVID situation still being what it is, uh, it's really not possible to, to do host families. The players are going to be in uh, living here locally in a, in a hotel um, and, and pretty much under the same roof and same thing when they go on the road. So unfortunately in 2021, the host family program is not happening. Um, but you know, possibly down in the road in the future, when we get to 2022, there might be some opportunities to, to reintroduce the program. Um, but I could tell you from, from players that I've gotten to know over the years from my first run through and, and more recently, um, it is the one thing that players talk about with such joy and love really um, about being here in the Hudson Valley is the, is the relationships that they forged with their host families. And so from our organization, you know, we can't thank all of you enough who have been host families here uh, throughout our, since 1995, that was the first year we started the program. It's definitely one of my favorite things about the Renegades. I glad when I come back to you, you got, you have your 60 second, 60, your 60 second closeout speech, right? Tyson, I'm gonna give you a softball on this one. Uh, okay. And again, it comes from multiple people. Uh, even though our schedule's online, apparently people haven't checked it out. What are we doing for the 4th of July? So we're on, we're in Jersey shore on the 4th of July, unfortunately. Um, that doesn't mean that we might come up with something to do here at the ballpark. So stay tuned on that. Hopefully we're able to throw something together and get people out here. We would love to have people out here even on a non-game day. So we'll, we'll try to get something together for 4th of July for us to celebrate. And maybe there's uh, some, some possibility to get people out to the Dutch to watch some boom booms in the sky. Well, I like that. Boom booms in the sky. All right, so next time I come back to you, you have your, your farewell speech, all right? All right, Glide, sum it up in a minute, please. Don't put a timer on me. Uh, <laughs> Come on, go. Well, first off, again, you know, from all of us with the Renegades, we want to thank everyone for their patience through this process. I know there's a lot of more questions and 
know, feel free to shoot us an email at info at hvrenegades.com. We can get back to you with, with some answers that way as well. Um, listen, there's, there's a lot of change this year, and it's, and, and it's a very unique year. And in all my years of working in minor league baseball, the, the, the challenges of putting this all together are tenfold from where they've ever been before. Um, but what I can tell you is, is that we're doing everything we can to make sure that we open safely, um, that, we sh that we provide a great experience for every fan who comes in here, and um, that when you leave, you're going to feel fulfilled that you, you got back to the ballpark for the first time in a few years and that you had a great night and you want to come back again and again. And that's always been our goal anyhow. Um, but with regard to things like the testing and all that, you know, that, please understand that's from the state level. Um, that is not at the local level. Our friends at Dutchess County have been tremendous to work with, and they've been very supportive to help us through this process to get us open um, on May 11th. Uh, from Mark Molinaro, Ron Hicks, and everyone at, at the Dutchess County government, uh, we've been pestering them with a lot of questions and, and asking for a lot of information and a lot of updates as to how we're going to be able to do this and how we need to do this safely and to make sure that we're following all the guidelines. So we appreciate uh, both of those individuals a great deal and really uh, appreciate all the help that they've offered us. And, um, you know, May 11th is four weeks from yesterday. <laughs> it's hard to believe that it's a month away. Uh, we're excited to welcome you all back to the ballpark and, and can't wait to get the season underway. So thank you again on behalf of all of us. All right, so, so Tyson, that was Mark Molinaro. Like, uh, he just took your entire minute, so you'd better say something quick. Okay. Uh, I'll say this. <laughs> as far as for someone that moved here, from another state in March of 2020, immediately got locked down, didn't have a season the first year, and we're finally starting to get back to where we can open the gates and have fans in the ballpark for some baseball. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting to know the fans better, getting to see some baseball being played out on the field with, with fans in the ballpark cheering and having a good time. Um, a lot of the things that we've done and a, a lot of the stress that these things have caused on us is – taking its toll. Uh, but we are ready. You know, we're, we're getting close. The lights at the end of the tunnel for us to open the gates and start the season. That's always a nice push of motivation to get us through kind of these challenging times, but um, stick with us. Uh, we're always going to be here to communicate and be as transparent as possible. We want to make sure that you have as much information as we do. Um, so we're going to share it as we get it. Hopefully we're able to stay in touch as we get closer to the season and, and make sure that we're answering all of your questions. But um, it's, it's our responsibility to provide a very high level of customer service to everyone. And even though some of these things that we're having to do makes us a little bit less flexible to be able to do that, um, we're always going to try to work with everybody and, and make sure that at the end of the day, um, you're having a good experience with, with the Renegades and a good experience with the baseball and, and the facilities that we have. So feel free to always reach out, give us a call, shoot us an email. Someone's always going to be here to answer the phone and, and take care of you. But I look forward to seeing everyone at the ballpark and getting to know everybody. All right, Steve, Tyson, thank you guys. My, my wrap up is this. If you know me, and a lot of fans have gotten to know me over the years because I've been a fixture around here for a long time, you know how much this means to me. You know how much doing the ball games, being a part of the ball game, uh, making people laugh, having them create memories with their families, how important that is to me. And I, I feel like a part of me was chipped away last year when I couldn't do that. You know, I would walk around my house and just announce things in my announcer voice. It's now time to watch the TV. So I missed it beyond belief. And I missed all you guys. And I'm so excited that we're a month away or a little less than a month in a way uh, from being able to bring it all back to you. And, and I'm excited and hope you're excited, excited as well. And I hope as we move on, we get to increase that number. But again, it's not us that will decide that. It's the governor that is going to decide that. So we'll do what the governor says. We'll do the best show that we can do based on what the governor and Major League Baseball says. And we can't wait to see you. So until we officially get to see you, good night, drive safely. God bless America. I'm Rick Solzer.